Hello everyone, uh, my name is Keith Hawkins. I'm a postdoctoral research scientist here at Columbia University. My research focuses on stars and their evolution. And so the subject of this video will be a little bit about the life and death of stars like our sun. But before I get too far in, I want to remind everybody what a star actually is. A star is essentially a big hot ball of gas. But what makes it distinct from any old hot ball of gas is that deep inside of its core it's undergoing nuclear fusion. Now fusion is a process where if you take four hydrogen atoms and you fuse them together into heavier elements. A star is essentially a tug of war between gravity trying to pull the star together and pressure trying to blow up the star and push it apart. The most familiar star to our own existence as human beings is probably the sun. But all of the stars in the night sky are similar to the sun and burning hydrogen to helium or heavier elements in their cores. So how is a star born? Stars are born from giant molecular clouds of gas. These clouds can be hundreds of thousand times the mass of our own sun. Over time, gravity begins to collapse this cloud and it heats up as it collapses. And when the gas gets hot enough, nuclear fusion will ignite, allowing hydrogen to fuse into helium. And this is the birth of a star. How a star evolves after this depends almost entirely on its mass. A star that's very low mass, about 8% times the mass of our own sun, is just big enough to begin fusing in its core. And we call these stars brown dwarfs, or failed stars. Now these can live for tens of billions of years, more than the age of our own universe in fact. Now a star like our sun, however, those will live about 10 billion years or so. The sun will spend 90% of its 10 billion year life happily fusing hydrogen into helium in its core. Now since the sun is about 4.5 billion years old or so, or about just under halfway through its life, as our sun begins to die, its core will contract and heat up to fuse heavier elements helium into carbon and nitrogen and oxygen. But its outer layers will expand, and unfortunately for the Earth, it will engulf the first three planets. So hopefully, in five billion years time, when our sun begins to expand, we found a way off planet Earth. Because if we don't, we'll be inside of our own sun. As the sun continues to evolve, the core will continue to fuse up heavier and heavier elements. But when it reaches iron, it will begin to die. And the reason for this is because iron is a special element where you cannot fuse it to get energy out. And so fusion begins to turn off. The outer layers of our own sun will disperse away and become a beautiful planetary nebula like the one that you see behind me. At its center will remain the core of the sun, which we call a stellar remnant or a white dwarf. Now higher mass stars live even more energetic lives. These stars live only for about 10 or so million years. And they, most of their life, they fuse hydrogen into helium. But towards the end of their lives, they fuse all the other elements up to iron. When they reach iron, much like the sun, the nuclear fusion will begin to shut off. But because the star is so big and so massive, gravity will win the tug of war and send the outer layers of the star crashing down into its core. And this will be the start of a supernova explosion. These explosions are the most powerful and energetic explosions that we know of in our universe. Supernovas can be so bright that they shine more brightly than our own galaxy for days at a time. The other really cool thing about supernovas is that they disperse all of the ingredients for life that was formed inside of the star. Ingredients like carbon, for our bones, oxygen that we breathe, iron for our blood. So when people say that we are stardust, they say this because when these stars die, these heavier stars explode and produce the elements for life and disperse into the universe. And the highest mass stars, the 50 or 100 solar mass stars, these stars become even denser and leave behind remnants like neutron stars or black holes. So regardless of if a star is very low mass, sun-like, or very, very even very high mass, what it produces and its life cycle is exceedingly exciting. And still there are a lot of unsolved problems that maybe you can solve one day about the life and death of stars. So if you're interested in stellar astronomy or anything that I've spoke about 
feel free to look at the links below. If you're interested in the universe as a whole or just how things work, feel free to subscribe to our channel. We hope that you learned something about the life and death of stars, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you.